A few weeks ago, I taught you how to exploit the Twitter algorithm to get a six-figure job in tech, but there's just one major flaw with that strategy. Nobody learning how to code has time to tweet multiple times per day. Luckily, you don't have to, because today I'll teach you how to build a Twitter bot from scratch that uses artificial intelligence to create unique high-value tweets all day long. My Twitter bot, Bob, is coming up with awesome tweets at the top of the hour every hour, and I only pay him like 10 cents a day. He tells funny jokes, gives web dev hot takes, promulgates conspiracy theories, says nice things about his mom and humble brags about his 100 days of code journey. He is my protege, my magnum opus. When I die, he will be the one to carry the fire. If you're new here, like and subscribe, because in today's tutorial, you'll learn one of the most important techniques in web development today, and that's how to work with the OAuth 2.0 authentication protocol. As a developer, it opens the door to building apps that act on behalf of a user from another service, like you might use it to upload files to Google Drive, process payments with Stripe Connect, or in our case, post tweets to somebody's Twitter account. So before we jump into the code, let's do a quick crash course on API authentication. For Twitter, you'll first want to create a developer account, then on the developer portal, you can create a new application. When you create an app, it will give you an API key and API secret. The API key is like a username, while the secret is like a password. These two values together create what's known as a bearer token to authenticate your developer app. This token is included on an authorization header when making a request to the API that tells Twitter who you are and what you have access to. That's nice and easy, but it just provides read-only access to public information on Twitter. That's because you don't automatically have access to somebody else's account. To get permission from a user, you'll need to go through the OAuth 2.0 authorization code flow. There are three steps in the process. On the server, you'll first need to create an authorization link that will redirect the user to Twitter where they can grant access to your application from the browser. Once permission is granted, Twitter will then redirect them to a different endpoint on your server, which is called the callback URL. That URL will also include a special code that you'll need to verify on the server. Once verified, Twitter will give you two values, an access token and a refresh token. You'll want to save these values in a database. The third step is to use the access token. That's the value that gives you access to make API calls on behalf of the user. Now, the one problem though is that the access token will expire after a certain amount of time. It depends on what your app is trying to do, but if you want to post tweets in the background while your user is asleep, then you'll also need to refresh the token. For that, you make an additional call to the Twitter API with your refresh token, and it will respond with a new access token. This is a security measure that prevents a hacker from going absolutely crazy if your database is ever compromised. Now that you know how OAuth 2.0 works, let's actually implement it with some JavaScript code. I'm going to use Firebase Cloud Functions for this project, but feel free to use any Node.js server that you want. And also keep in mind that if you're building a real Twitter bot, you'll also need a database to store the access tokens. In this demo, I'll be using Firestore to handle that. All you need is a Firebase account, which is completely free, and if you want to get really good at Firebase, become a pro member at Fireship.io. I'll leave a discount in the description. To create a new Node.js project, I'll first run Firebase init functions from the command line. I'll cd into the functions directory, and then install two dependencies. We have the Twitter API Node SDK and also the OpenAI SDK for GPT-3 that we'll look at later. Now, in the index.js file, we can create multiple serverless functions. Let's go ahead and do that for all three steps in the process. First, we have auth, which will generate the authentication link. Then we have the callback URL. And finally, we have an endpoint to do something interesting with the API. Now, we're working in a trusted server environment, so I'm going to import Firebase admin and call admin initialize app. This will give us access to the Firestore database, giving us a place to store the access tokens. In fact, I'm going to make a reference to a document in the database right now, which you can think of as a JSON document that we read and write to. Now from there, we'll want to initialize the Twitter API. There are a few different ways to do it, but in our case, using OAuth 2.0, we'll want to instantiate it using the client ID and client secret. To get those values, we'll need to go back to our Twitter app and select OAuth 2.0 from the authentication settings. Now there is one very important value that we'll need to add in the configuration settings, and that's the callback URL. Currently, we don't have a production URL to use here, but we can create one by going to the terminal in our project and running Firebase serve. Go ahead and copy the URL that points to callback, then paste it into the Twitter app. Now, Twitter doesn't allow you to use localhost, but you can use your localhost IP, which is the same for everybody, 127.0.0.1. Now go ahead and save your settings, and it will give you a client ID and client secret. Those are the values you want to use when instantiating the Twitter client. I am also setting up a variable here for the callback URL, because we'll need to reference that later as well. Now we're ready to implement step one. We can generate the authentication URL by running generate OAuth2 auth link. It takes the callback URL as an argument and also an array of scopes. These are the various permission levels that you're asking the user to grant your app. In this example, we want to be tweeting all day every day, 
which means we need read and write access, as well as offline access, which allows us to do things in the background while the user is sleeping. Now calling this method will return three values. The first one is the URL. We can take that URL and simply redirect the user to it. But in order to verify the user in the future, we'll also need to save a code verifier and state to the database. I can do that with Firestore by simply setting those values on the document in the database. That's all there is to it. Let's go ahead and try it out in the browser. When we go to the auth URL, it should automatically redirect you to Twitter. At this point, you'll want to be signed into the Twitter account that you want to use as the bot. But what you'll also notice is that if you go to the Firestore database, you should see a value for code verifier and state saved there as well. When you click authorize, notice how Twitter will redirect you to the callback URL, and that URL also contains parameters for code and state. Now let's implement the code to handle this callback. First, we'll grab the state and code values from the request query in the URL. We need to compare these values with what we stored in the database in step one. Let's grab the code verifier and the state from the database, then run a validation to see if there's a mismatch between the state and the stored state. If they don't match, then we'll respond with an error. Otherwise, we can use the Twitter client to log in with OAuth2. Notice how it takes the code from the URL and the code verifier from the database to authenticate the user with our Twitter app. That will return an authenticated client that we can use to start making API requests on behalf of that user. But more importantly for now, it returns an access token and refresh token, which we'll also want to save in the database. Now at this point, we could use the logged in client to make requests to the Twitter API. We'll get to that in just a second. For now, let's just send a 200 response back and then go to the browser and test it out. After the user is done granting permission via Twitter, it should should redirect to the callback URL, at which point the access and refresh tokens will be saved in the database. And now finally, we've reached the fun part of this video, where we outsource our tweets to artificial intelligence via GPT-3. I would like to invite you all to come along with me on a journey. And the third endpoint, the first thing we'll do is access the refresh token from the database. Now let's assume that a few hours have passed and we want to re-access the user's Twitter account. We can do that by calling the refresh OAuth2 token method, which will give us a brand new access token and also a client where we can start making API calls. When we get the new access token, We'll want to also save that to the database. Dealing with a refresh token is only required if your Twitter bot does things in the background, because otherwise your app could just use the access token that wouldn't be expired yet. In any case, we can now use the Twitter client to do things like access the user's profile information or to send a tweet on their behalf. And there's all kinds of other things you could do as well, like send DMs, retweets, or any kind of other pointless activity you can imagine doing on Twitter. For example, let's go ahead and use the client with version two of the API to access their profile using the me method. That will give us some JSON data, which we can send as the response. Then when we open the function in the browser, the result is an object with that user's profile data. Now let's take things to the next level with OpenAI. You'll first need an OpenAI account to access GPT-3. Then you'll need to grab your organization ID and API secret, which are then used to initialize the Node SDK in our JavaScript code. Now tweeting is about to become the easiest thing you've ever done in your life. To create a new tweet, go back into the function code, then call OpenAI create completion. It takes an AI model like DaVinci as its first argument, then a prompt as the second argument. If we prompt it to give us a tweet, it will generate a unique tweet on the fly. I want to point out that in the full source code, I did some randomizing to give it over 10,000 potential prompts, resulting in a greater variation of tweets. This code is top secret to just me and Bob, but play around with the prompt to see what kind of interesting results you get. Now, all we have to do is take that text and then call the tweet method on the Twitter client. Congratulations, you just built an AI-powered Twitter bot. Call this function from the browser, then go to your Twitter account, and you should see the new tweet tweet posted there. Now all you have to do is create a cron job to run this in the background a few times a day, and after a few months, you should have all kinds of six-figure job offers in your DMs. If you found this tutorial useful and want to build more complex apps, I have multiple articles and videos for pro members on Fireship.io explaining different OAuth 2.0 authentication flows. And as a final note, I want to talk about who Bob really is. Like, whose face is that? It's not a friend of mine or some random model I found on the internet. It's a face generated with AI, specifically a generative adversarial network called StyleGAN. Bob's face doesn't actually exist in reality, at least in the biological sense. Check out generated.photos to create your own random person. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one.